Welcome, everybody. It's Thursday, December 28th. John Aravosis here with the Aravosis Report, here to talk to you about the latest from Ukraine with a little bit of Israel news. Today's mostly a Ukraine news day. Um, let me get rolling on TikTok on my... Oh, I got my sound on. Turn that off. Oh, let me get... That also got hit. There we go. Instagram rolling. All right. Ooh, wait, where is this? There we go. All right. TikTok. Mirror my image. Boom. Excellent. All right. Hey, everybody. Hello, TikTokers. Join us. How's everybody doing? Cheers. I've got my, my, what is this? Gatorade substitute. <laughs> I was feeling dehydrated. Bounty? No. Body armor? It sounds like a deodorant. Body armor. It's very good, actually. I'm surprised. It's actually better than Gatorade. Anyway. Hello, Yvonne or Yvonne, depending how y'all say it. Hey, Carlos. Oh, so what's going on? Oh, hey, Carlos. Yeah, sorry about all the trouble you're having. Uh, hey, Scott, thank you for that. Oh, so welcome back, guys. It's Thursday. Um, I am not a big New Year's guy. Thank you, John S., for the gift. So no big plans for the weekend. I've never been a big New Year's guy. Yeah, the sound is what it wants to be, Kelly. <laughs> it's the same setup. It just, I think it's the, it's the service I use to connect to YouTube and all the other sites simultaneously. I think sometimes it just botches the sound. Yeah, TikTok is sounding good. Okay, thanks, Brandon Moore. That's good to know. Anyway, um, so is it today's Thursday? So remember, Saturday morning, we'll do our usual uh, coffee talk, coffee talk, where I hang out with the uh, monthly subscribers, the folks who are giving me monthly contributions to support my work on TikTok. And, and then the rest of you will be over at Discord, YouTube, Twitch, Kofi, et cetera. Thank you, Lori, for the snowman. Hey, Jaylene in D.C. Ah, oh, red in Israel. Hey, red. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so we'll we'll give another minute and then we'll start the show. I like to give a little bit of time for folks to be able to kind of filter in on TikTok and YouTube and stuff. So we'll wait a minute and then we'll start. And most of the news today is Ukraine. Like I said, a little bit of Israel. There, there's nothing new. I mean, it's, it, the Israeli news is all the same thing every day. I mean, and I just don't, you know, you can go to the newspaper for that. Thank you, Jada. I mean, literally, it's the same thing. You know, civilians are dying. There's not enough food. You know, the Israelis are bombing, the, the Hezbollah is attacking. It's just, I mean, it's the same story every day. You know, not, not that it's not important, but there's no news to give you. Thank you, Tom. So I don't want to, like, just give the same story each day. So anyway, like I said, we'll start Ukraine in a second. A lot of news on Ukraine, actually, because that's going to get very interesting now, depending what happens with USAID and all the aid from uh, foreign countries, etc. Anybody who's new, this is a, a nightly show I do Monday to Friday, uh, 6 o'clock Eastern Time U.S., Talk about the latest news from Ukraine. Also hit other stories. Again, we've been hitting real late. I'm going to start with a little uh, a quick U.S. campaign story since it relates to something I mentioned last night. Hey, Reyes, I am back. Hey, Beckel, thank you. Thank you, Mustard. Um, yeah, so, uh, all right, I'll get rolling here. Another sip of my, <laughs> my hydrating electrolytes. Thank you, Carol. So welcome, guys. I am uh, John Arvosis. <laughs> Mustard goes crazy. I am John Arvosis. Uh, this is my nightly show, as I said, where we talk about the latest news from Ukraine. Also, fill you guys up. Oh, those are kind of cool. Thanks, Mustard. I just put those up. I'd not seen them before. The 2024 glasses. TikTok needs to put this stuff up earlier. TikTok has really cool gifts you can give, but they only put them out like like right before the event. So like they're putting out New Year stuff right now. Thank you, Larissa, which is great, but it only gives you like three days to do it. I like those. Uh, any case, so yeah, I will start with the Ukraine news, and we'll do a very little bit of Israel. Um, and first, I'll start with uh, a little U.S. presidential news. As always, please do keep the gifts coming. I will always do a shout out for the big TikTok gifts that fly around, um, and also for super chat questions. Thank you, Joe, for super chat questions on YouTube. As a thanks, I will always get to those as the next thing I talk about. Uh, I try to get to as many questions as possible, but it's just not possible with the audience. There's too many folks, um, which is good. And I appreciate you guys are here. Uh, but as a thank you for folks who support my work, I will always get to those questions on, on YouTube. Uh, and finally, I do this for free. So, and I do it full time. Uh, so the only way I'm able to do this is with your guys' gifts. So please do keep the gifts coming. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. Who's that? Amy and Allie both. Thank you, guys. All right. Let me start first on Nikki Haley. So the U.S. presidential news. I'm bringing this up because, well, a couple things. One, I've been doing um, 
I've been saying that I want to branch out a little bit in the news I cover over the next year because it is the U.S. elections next year, the presidential elections and congressional elections. And that's very important. It's very important to me as an American. It's also very important to the world. Thank you, Marie. And thank you, Annie, for the gift on, on YouTube. Um, so I, and it's just too big of a story. So I'm going to be covering more of that as time goes on. Um, the one story I wanted to tell you is about Nikki Haley, because she is the woman I mentioned to you guys last night. Somebody had asked at one point in the show, which U.S. presidential candidates were actually good on Ukraine. And Thank you, Amy. I mentioned, you know, Biden. I've got concerns about Biden, but Biden's good. Um, I mentioned uh, Nikki Haley, who's uh, the woman running for a Republican, former Republican governor of South Carolina, a woman, Nikki Haley. Um, uh, Mike Pence. I didn't mention him, but I should have. Mike Pence, the former vice president under Trump, even though he's not doing well. Um, uh, what's his face? Uh, Chris Christie, former governor of New Jersey, Republican very pro-Ukraine. He's not doing well. Thank you, Lori. Um, and Mike Pompeo, who I don't even know if he's running anymore. He was Trump's secretary of state. So they're, they're the good guys as far as who are the, the candidates that are up. Now, the funny part was Haley came in the news. Did Pence drop out? Okay. Well, Pence never really dropped in, <laughs> you know, but Pence did drop out. Thank you for the gift there, life. Um, so I want to mention Haley because there's a little controversy that popped up with her yesterday. She's at an, uh, at an event. And she gets asked by somebody in the audience, what was the cause? What do you think the cause was of the United States Civil War that happened in like 18, I always forget, it's 1860 or 1861, guys. My, my gut wants to tell me 61. Was it 61? I don't want to get the date wrong, but like 1861 to 1865 or so was the U.S. Civil War, the North, the South, the South seceded. Very bloody, I mean, very bloody conflict for the era. Um, and 1861 to 65. Thank you, Mark. That's what I thought. And she gets asked, what, what was the cause of the Civil War? And she gives this kind of long-winded answer. I would play you the tape, but take, YouTube gets, I'm playing on, I'm doing this on YouTube as well. YouTube gets weird sometimes when you do recordings. They go, oh, it's a copyright thing, so I'm skipping it. But she does this very weird, long-winded answer and says, it was about economic freedom. <laughs> and everyone's kind of like, no, was it? Thank you, C3 and Jace. The Civil War was about slavery. I mean, there was issues, obviously, right? Leading up to the uh, Haley is South Carolina, South Carolina. It's on the east coast of the U.S., pretty far south, north of Florida, um, a couple couple states north of Florida on the east of the U.S. And she says it was about economic freedom. <laughs> no, it wasn't. The Civil War was about slavery. And that's kind of an easy answer to give. <laughs> it's a very, I mean, this is not a trick question, what caused the American Civil War, right? I mean, it's just not a, a, a trick question. So. She gets uncomfortable and gives a kind of cagey answer about economic freedom. Everyone kind of goes nuts and go, not everyone. The media goes nuts. People on the left kind of go nuts. People in the middle go nuts and go, like, what are you talking about? This is about slavery. She then comes out this morning and gives like a clarification and says, of course it was about slavery. I was trying to talk about the economy. Some kind of weird long-winded answer. Bottom line was she was uncomfortable giving the answer that the Civil War was about slavery because, I mean, I, I, okay, this is my take. I have zero doubt that my take is correct. There is, this is not like conjecture where, gosh, who knows, right? She was uncomfortable. And she even said she thought it was a trick question. She thought it was a trick question by a Biden plant, by somebody who came there representing President Biden to ask her a trick question. The problem was the trick question was not a difficult question. It was an easy question. Right? What caused the civil war? Slavery. I mean, like it, it, it's not a hard question. Um, it's only a trick question if you believe that criticizing slavery will get you in trouble with your voters. That that is what would make it a trick question. If you thought slavery was something that your voters were kind of in the middle on, right? Um, it's really bad, guys. And and uh, you know it it's. It's really bad. I mean, what worries me is a couple of things here. One, she's considered normal. In today's Republican Party, she's considered a good one. Like, you know, she kind of flirts with Trump. She worked for Trump at the UN. Um, and then she, criti she like criticized Trump and worked for him, then criticized Trump and defended him. She's very weird back and forth on Trump, right? But she's considered a normal Republican. Now, I say normal, meaning I'm not even talking her politics. I'm talking 
you know, generally speaking, I wouldn't expect her to support an insurrection, right? Like, like she's pro-democracy, which today in the Republican Party is a good deal. This is Nikki Haley. But being afraid that she's the, uh, one of the Republican presidential candidates and they um, not doing well, but among all the candidates not doing well, thank you, Simon, she's doing better than a lot of them, right? But she's not doing well. Trump is still the, Trump's got like 50, 60% of the vote and Nikki Haley might have 15 or something. I mean, it's, it's not good. But what we see is that even the normal woman, even the normal woman running for president on the Republican side thought criticizing slavery would alienate Republican voters. That's really screwed up. And that's very scary. That's very scary. Um, that is, it, 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 you get it. It's an indication of kind of where the party is, and that's just very bad. And that's clearly what was, the, the very fact that she said it was a trick question proves my point because it's not a trick. I mean, it's not a trick question. It's just not a trick question. Cause she literally should have gone slavery. Like that was easy, right? I mean, I mean, and oh, and let me let me point out one more thing historically that's important because um, a number of folks were saying, as a Republican, Nikki Haley should have knocked it out of the ballpark. As a baseball expression we use, meaning you know, gotten a hundred percent because. Abraham Lincoln, our president at the time, who led the, you know, led the, 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 the American troops to stop the South from leaving, right? Thank you, Jonathan, was a Republican. A Republican president, now mind you, totally different Republican than today, but who cares, right? A Republican president held the country together and defeated slavery. That's your answer if you're Nikki Haley, right? Thank you, 16. The answer should have been. What was it about? It was about a Republican. Here, how's this? It was about a Republican standing up for freedom. That's the answer you get. And you say freedom to, to work as you wish, to have your life, to not, have to, to not be owned by someone else. I mean, right? You could give this amazing answer about this is the Republican Party with a party of freedom. And she, she thought trick question. Anyway, really weird. Really, really freaking weird. Um, it's just, you know, um, yes, no, and I will raise a quick little point here because Alec mentions a point that a lot of folks mention. People who really get into the history and stuff um, like to talk about there are a lot of economic reasons and everything else. I mean, Alec, I'll just put up Alec's comment really quick on, on YouTube. There are many reasons why the American Civil War occurred, most importantly slavery, but economic was also a reason because the North had more profit compared to the South, which was reliant on cotton. Exactly. There were lots of reasons. But the easy answer was slavery, even better, taking Alex's answer into account. Slavery and some economic stuff as well, right? That's your answer. I could go into this, but I don't want to have a long, if I were her, I'd say, I don't want to have a long history lesson here on all the issues with, with the North and South and the economic problem. But it was slavery and a bunch of economic issues. That's all. Anyway, it's, it's very scary that that was a problem. Um, and again, I, I just I raise it as one of those more um, illustrative issues that I think say something about our country that worries me. That, that's why I bring it up. Okay, let's go on now. Uh, Ukraine. So um, it's day 672 of Vladimir Putin's special three-day military operation in Ukraine. Um, the um, I was gonna. I'm gonna mention the political article one more time that came out yesterday because it really bothered me. Um, and I think it's important for where we are now. We are at a crossroads now in terms of support for Ukraine, right? We know um, the U.S., it's not clear what the hell's going on with the U.S., right? The U.S. has no more money. We gave our last aid package yesterday, $250 million, that's M, right? The previous ones were like a billion, two billion to be. $250 million, it included um, ammunition for HIMARS, artillery, ammunition, you know, stuff like that. And that's artillery shells. And that's it. We're done. The U.S. The U.S. would have money if Congress acts. But until Congress acts, the president has no money. That's the way uh, your system government probably works the same way. Uh, the president, uh, it, it's the Congress that appropriates the money. And then the, the president, the executive, 
can determine where it goes with more specificity. But until Congress says, here is 20 billion, for example, to give to Ukraine over the next few months, the president won't have the money unless Congress says so. All the money's gone. Um, Congress has not put any more money up, which is very bad. Um, it's very bad. So um, the article yesterday in Politico was, and I, 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 uh, somebody I think from the administration on it, and it really pissed me off from the Biden administration. I'm going to read you the first paragraph again. I won't read it. I won't. Uh, I won't jump in with any snark. I will just simply read you the paragraph from Politico about the situation with aid to Ukraine. Okay, and then Politico, by the way, is a very good American political uh, news publication. I mean, they're good. They're a good news source. But listen to this. Okay, with U.S. and European aid to Ukraine now in serious jeopardy. The Biden administration and European officials are quietly shifting their focus from supporting Ukraine's goal of total victory over Russia to improving its position in an eventual negotiation to end the war, according to a Biden administration official and a European diplomat based in Washington. Such a negotiation would likely mean giving up parts of Ukraine to Russia. Now, what a lot of folks are pointing out today, which I pointed out last night in reading this story, this was Politico, yes, is our goal has not been total victory for Ukraine. I mean, certainly not the United States. I'm saying NATO overall, that's not been the goal. The United States, France, Germany, the goal has not been total victory over Russia, right? The goal has been to hold Russia back, to stop. I haven't known what Rarell says I called it from day one. I've been talking about this from the beginning, right? The goal, and by the way, if you look at, I always like when the naysayers, okay, thanks Cliff, I'll keep an eye out. I always like when the naysayers get pissed at me because the experts pretty much all agree with me. I mean, the experts look at this and they will, you will see, this was a, a defense editor at The Economist, which I used to write for, by the way, many years ago, but at The Economist, who weighed in and said the same thing. He said, that wasn't the, the U.S. goal. The U.S. goal wasn't total victory. The U.S. goal was always, always to put Ukraine in a better position for negotiating with Russia. And remember how a lot of us kept saying, well, rather than focusing on the negotiation, why don't we just try to win? Right. But that was not that was not the goal. Um, and it just we are already seeing and what worries me about the political art is we are seeing administration officials already play games. Right. I mean, they. Oh, oh I mean, the, here's the game they're playing. They're literally playing the game of up until now. We're not going to give Ukraine everything it needs because we're afraid Putin's going to you know, he's got nukes and he'll get angry, especially especially if Putin loses Crimea. He gets, he gets angry, he'll get angry, and he'll go crazy in nuclear, whatever. Now, so, so we're not going to give Ukraine enough weapons to, to win the war, right? We're not, is what the administration basically was saying between the lines. Today, they're now saying, well, we gave Ukraine every weapon possible to win the war, and they didn't do it, so now we have to negotiate. You see, like, before it was, we're not going to give you all the weapons, so you'll have to negotiate, and now it's, we gave you all the weapons. It didn't work. So I guess we don't have any choice but to negotiate. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it, it was a fait accompli from the beginning. And it really pisses me off. It just really pisses me off. Um, oh, sorry, Cliff, did you have a question? Cliff did a super chat uh, comment, not a question, but I'll read it. Um, oh, phone screwed up the message. Uh, is it not true that the Department of State and the Pentagon is fed with Ukraine and Israel and basically is applied pressure for both to stop? Cliff, uh, you wrote that too quickly. You wrote that too quickly. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Now, my suspicion overall is, I will tell you this, I think Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, from the beginning was, A, worried about Putin having nukes and that it was an unnecessary risk. I think he thinks Ukraine doesn't matter. I think he thinks Putin's got nukes and there's you never know what he might do. Why take the risk? And second of all, um, even before Israel, thank you, Marcy, even before Israel clicked in, in Gaza, we've got to worry about China. And I will bet you Jake Sullivan said, the battle over Taiwan is the battle of the age. That's the battle of the, of the 21st century. That's the one we have to worry about, not Ukraine and Russia. That's the battle of the last century. You know, let's give them, if we've got to give them enough to keep it at bay, fine, right? And then, no, and then, by the way, it's true. Biden gave enough weapons, not just Biden, Europe too. Biden gave enough weapons that the Ukrainians were able to hold off the Russians, right? I mean, the Russians were able to get 17% of Ukraine, but they, they weren't able to move beyond. They, they probably would have been able to move beyond and taken more of Russia or more of Ukraine had we not helped them. But 
but you get it, right? We didn't want to help them get their land back. We did not. Thank you, Pedro. Um, any case, it still pisses me off. This is going to be an ongoing issue as we as we go forward. Um, yeah, uh, Cliff is saying Department of State and the Pentagon want Ukraine and Israel to stop. State Department probably does. Pentagon, hard to say. Um, Pentagon is going to understand the threat that Russia probe that Russia poses. You know, thank you, Courtney. I think the Pentagon's going to understand it much more than the State Department, as far as that goes. I think we are turning Ukraine into a stalemate. Junkmaster was asking if I'm saying Ukraine's a stalemate. Thank you, Ava. I think we are turning it into a stalemate. I do not think it would be a stalemate if we gave them the weapons. That we want. Um, and this was before the Republican problem, right? Before the, the issue with the Republicans um, not providing further aid, you know? No, I've been, yeah, no, I know the life was, this is, this was my take on it from the beginning. We, we didn't want them to win, but we didn't want them to lose. And we got exactly what, what they wanted. All right, let me keep moving ahead. Yeah, Will is asking for news on the F-16s. I've got some of that coming up. Um, European support, Bloomberg had an article today, which is good. It looks like the Europeans um, are going to come up with an alternative proposal for Ukraine, possibly $50 billion in aid. Um, the Hungarians, of course, are blocking it because they're, they're Russian stooges. I was going to say Soviet stooges. That's about right. Uh, they're Russian stooges at this point. And, um, you know, they hate the Ukrainians, love Putin. This can be grabbed from the Hungarians. It's very bad. Um, and... I mean, it's funny, actually, too, because like Vlad was, uh, thank you, Mari. Um, I, I was talking about going to Ukraine, even possibly this winter. And one of the options was to go via Hungary. And I told Vlad, I was like, I'm just kind of creeped out by Hungary. I don't really want to, I don't want to be there. Like it just, it, going to Hungary feels to me like going to Eastern Europe. I went, it was creepy. You know, the Soviet Union was creepy too. There's a creep factor now, I feel, for Hungary because of all of it, which is too bad. Thank you, Norway. You know, it just, yeah, they're, like I said, they're, they're Russian, they're a Russian puppet now, which is really too bad. In any case, so it looks like the Europeans hopefully have found a way around the um, the block from Hungary. It deals something with the European countries going and getting individual packages or loans or God knows, it was very complicated. I didn't understand it. But bottom line is the Germans are saying it looks like they may have found a way around the Hungarians. Um, F-16 training. So The Drive, which is a good American um, defense publication, said that today, I'll just read you a little bit of this, uh, six Ukrainian pilots are learning to fly F-16s in Denmark. Uh, the third cohort to be trained on the fighters since July. Um, the pilots first traveled to the UK for English language skills. Uh, then, they, uh, then they moved over to uh, basic, basic flight training. Um, a further 10 Ukrainian pilots have completed language training in the UK and are now receiving basic flight training. Additionally, dozens of Ukrainian aircraft are undergoing English language training. Um, we get it. So uh, another sort of tranche of pilots. This one is six. If each one was six, that would mean we've got about 18 pilots in the pipeline now. The problem, as you know, is it takes you know, six months. It could take eight months, right? So it's getting there, but it's getting there very slowly, which is not good. Um, all right. What else we got here? Netherlands. Oh, so interesting, interesting warning from, um, an outgoing army commander in the Netherlands. Although I don't think it's particularly problematic. Um, but he, he warned that, uh, their country must be better prepared for a future war with Russia. Um, he, uh, he said Dutch society should not think that safety is guaranteed because the country is over a thousand kilometers, 600 miles from Russia. Russia is getting stronger. The Netherlands must seriously fear a war and the society must prepare for this. You know, bottom line is he's warning what should be warned. Russia's back, guys. Um, the Soviet Union, I, I don't want to say the Soviet Union is back because then you've got to literally do a comparison with history and say, okay, does everything match up, right? They're not coming in this kind of stuff. But the same mentality that that infested the Soviet Union still exists in Russia and is running Russia today. It's megalomania. It's in, it's in, it's an inferiority complex. Um, it's an immorality and an amorality. I'm going to talk about some of that in a minute. Some more news from Ukraine. Um, they're vicious. Uh, they're expansionist. And yeah, they go to war with their neighbors and they don't care what they do. 
you know, they just don't care. Um, it's very, it's bad. Um, it's bad. So in any case, um, a little bit more here, a Panamanian flagged civilian cargo vessel was hit by a Russian mine in the Black Sea. Haven't seen anything more on that um, other than that report. Um, but I did see, at first I saw that the, the ship was hit by a mine. It didn't say Russian. And I saw reports saying it was the Russians. Um, I mentioned that the U.S. put up its last amount of aid. Hang on a second here. Callum is sending me secret love messages on Signal. Um, interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, that's what we're trying to figure out, Callum. Um, what else we got here? So, yeah, a couple kind of nasty stories from Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian human rights ombudsman con has confirmed the authenticity of a video that was released a few weeks ago. Uh, Radio Free Europe, Radio Free Liberty shared it that appeared to show Russian troops using Ukrainian prisoners of war as um, human shields. And the video, I just watched it before the show. I hadn't seen it. It came out a couple weeks ago. It shows like four Russian troops walking through a field with three Ukrainian soldiers in front of them and, and like back and forth so that if you try to hit the Russians with like a shell that goes off or something, you're going to hit the Ukrainians too. Um, really just horrific. Um, I, anyway, just wanted to bring it up because I wasn't sure if you guys had seen it. Um, it it's bad. It's obviously not good. Ashley, I don't know if Ashley's here today. Maybe she's not. I don't, Ashley has not checked in. I'm hoping she's okay. I assume she's okay. Um, but hopefully she will join us tomorrow. Um, Institute for Study of War, a Ukrainian drone footage published on December 27th, that would be yesterday, showed another Russian execution of Ukrainian prisoners of war in western Zaporizhia. The geolocated video shows Russian servicemen shooting three Ukrainian soldiers whom Russian forces captured in a tree line. Uh, the video later depicts one Russian soldier shooting an already dead Ukrainian serviceman again at close range. Really screwed. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, tell her, don't worry about it. We're doing okay. Ashley's at the pub. Yeah, Callum, Callum said she's out drinking. She's getting a new, a new, new, or an early New Year's in. Um, the Kohovka Dam, this is kind of interesting. So remember the dam that blew up several months ago? We're all pretty convinced the Russians did for, for a number of reasons. Um, Institute for the Study of War reports, they're the really good defense think tank in Washington. They report that Ukraine postponed a river crossing across the Dnipro. Let me show you. As part of their counteroffensive, they were going to do. Now, um, this is Kherson province. The Russians patrolled the whole thing at one point. Now the Ukrainians control north of the river. And the concern the Russians have, right, is the counteroffensive was coming down here, here, particularly here and here. A concern the Russians had was, would the Ukrainians potentially try to cross the river here as well, across the river? And the dam that, I'm going to guess, more or less the, the river was here the dam. Once you blow the dam, this whole area floods, okay? And once it floods, nobody can cross the river until it dries out and everything else. Well, what Institute for the Study of War is now saying is that, uh, reportedly, the Ukrainians were, in fact, planning some kind of assault across the river, and it was going to supplement the counteroffensive they were doing, and they had to call it off after the Russians blew up the dam, which is interesting because it it would go to the issue of may, uh, one of the reasons why the counteroffensive wouldn't have been as effective, right? Um, a little bit more here. Oh yeah, so interesting too. So the Associated speaking of the dam, the Russians blew up. The Associated Press did a big investigation on those who died. Right when the dam blew up, remember because we kept, we were all kind of wondering, and there weren't really statistics. The Russians claimed fifty nine people drowned when the dam blew up, and we're like fifty nine people, right? When the dam blew, I mind you, the dam went off at like two thirty in the morning. Okay, at two thirty in the morning, when everybody's home asleep, a dam explodes and only fifty nine people die. Right. Well, Associated Press on the region of the over six months since the catastrophic explosion that destroyed the Kohovka Dam in southern Kherson region, an Associated Press investigation has found Russian occupation authorities vastly and deliberately undercounted the dead in one of the most devastating chapters of the war. Russian authorities took control of the issuance of death certificates, immediately removing bodies not claimed by family and preventing local health workers and volunteers from dealing with the dead, threatening them when they defied orders. 
Um, the they mentioned one town uh, called Oleshki, one Russian occupied town in Ukraine called Oleshki, which Ukrainian military officials estimate had a population of 16,000 people at the time of the flooding. Um, the number of deaths is at least in the hundreds. Russia says 59 deaths total, right? One small town had hundreds of deaths. One little point that, that the Associated Press pointed out Russian authorities gave strict orders to local hospitals at one point that they were forbidden from issuing death certificates for flood victims. So they could issue death certificates for anything else other than flooding. And if it was if the cause of death was flooding, they were forbidden from issuing the death certificate. I mean, again, I point this out because this is the kind of country Russia is. I mean, we are dealing with a dictatorship, folks, and we're dealing with a country that was a, big, a very bad dictatorship. It was this, the Soviet Union, and really Russia ran the Soviet Union. They were the bad. They were the bad guys behind the whole thing. Thank you, Alex. Um, just uh, it just makes me sick when I read this stuff. It really does. Um, but this is the kind of people we're dealing with, and you've got to keep it in mind as far as why people worry about Russia getting more expansionist and winning this war. Um, finally, a, a Moscow court sentenced two men to prison for participating in a reading of poems against the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So these guys went in public and read poems against the war, and they arrested them and sentenced them to prison. Again, that's Russia. Say what you will about any of our countries, that crap doesn't happen. You're not going to go to jail for reading a poem against the war. That's never going to happen. Um, just wanted to point that out. All right. Um, I will switch to Israel. There's not much news. Like I said, just two quick little stories about Israel. Um, but please do keep the gifts coming, guys. I hate to harp on it, but I do need the gifts. Thank you, Al. Um, I do this for free, and I've been doing it full time for the last few years. And the only way to keep doing it is to pay for my bills. <laughs> and I do that. This is my income, basically. I mean, this literally is my income. Your guys' gifts are my salary. So please do keep them coming. Thank you, Swan person. Um, remember, you can also sign up for monthly contributions. Thank you, Alex and Fred. Um, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Kofi, to YouTube, you do it, hitting the dollar sign at the bottom, for the monthly subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you for that. Uh, TikTokers, you can join subscriptions via, on my profile, it says live subscription or something. You can click that and you can become a monthly member. Yeah, that was very nice of Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Um, you can become a monthly member there. And thank you, Fred, for the hearts as well. And Alex. Um, you can become a monthly TikTok subscriber. You can also put on Kofi. Anybody who knows Kofi, you can find that link in my profile on TikTok, the link tree link. Show you Kofi and PayPal and everything else. You guys can find Kofi at the bottom here. Also, Aravosa.com will get you with the Kofi link right there. So thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Vernon, for the gift. Um, let's just, really quick Israel update, Gaza update. There, I said at the beginning of the show, there isn't much news. And I don't want to, like, give the same news every day. People are dying. Starvation. Hamas keeps bombing, Hezbollah keeps bombing. I mean, it's the same freaking story. And I just find that boring to frankly. Thank you, Elizabeth. What I will tell you is um, Israel was in the process of attacking Damascus when the show started, uh, says the capital of Syria. Thank you, Timothy. So something's going on there, uh, hitting basically Iranian backed militias or terrorists in Syria. So that was happening right when the show started. And I would say probably the big story today is the growing concern of what's happening with Lebanon. Um, Southern Lebanon is controlled by Hezbollah, which is a sort of a, well, I'll, I'll read you a little bit about Hezbollah in a second from uh, sort of CNN, give a good description of it. But basically, terrorist group, really, uh, backed by Iran. Southern Lebanon, very powerful. And the concern is if they were to enter the war from the north, right? Because Gaza is in southwestern, basically, or it's Gaza is not Israel, but meaning there's like a square out of southwestern Israel where Gaza is. It's in the south. The north is Lebanon. If Hezbollah were to invade from the north, you'd have a massive battle going on in the north. Gaza is in the south. It spreads Israel's forces in two. Also, it just risks a greater regional war. Um, you have similar problem in Lebanon that you have in Gaza in the sense that there's a lot of uh, innocent well, on, on Palestinians in Gaza, I, I thank you, Esme. Um, I, I don't want to say who don't support the Palestinians did support the invasion of Israel. But we've got a lot of Palestinians who probably wouldn't be happy if they had come around, and a lot of Lebanese who probably would be happy too if Hezbollah were around. 
but you've got Hezbollah basically putting all of Lebanon into a war when half of Lebanon at least doesn't want to be in that war, right? Um, so that's sort of the big concern right now is uh, attacks are growing. Here's the one quote from The Guardian. Security sources in Israel said the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah fired the most rockets and weaponized drones on Wednesday that it had in any single day since the classes, clashes against the border began. So the concern is that it's heating up war and it could turn into a full blown war on northern Israel. That's right. That's right next to Syria. Um, Hezbollah, again, supported by Iran. Could that drag Iran in? Um, a lot of a lot of innocent uh, uh Lebanese would also be killed, Lebanese civilians. So you get it. it. It's all across the board. We don't want this to happen if it happens, but that's been a growing concern as well. Um, well, here's the background from CNN. Just a little bit of background from CNN on Hezbollah, which is the group that controls southern Lebanon. And then we'll just open this up. So um, while war has raged most fiercely in Gaza, there have been near constant skirmishes between Israel and Hezbollah, the militant group that dominates southern Lebanon since Hamas attacks on October 7th. Uh, they may has dominated southern Lebanon for years, but there have been growing clashes since October 7th. Hezbollah, an Iran-backed Islamist movement with one of the most powerful paramilitary forces in the Middle East, meaning they got one of the biggest militaries in the Middle East, has its main base on the Israeli-Lebanon border. It shares Hamas's ultimate goal of destroying the Jewish state. So there you go. Um, so that's where we are, guys. Uh, let's open this up for Q&A and everything else. Please, as I said, do keep the gifts coming, guys. I do need to pay the bills. I'd appreciate it. Um, and I do basically, if you like my show, <laughs> your guys' gifts are what allow me to keep doing the show. So thank you. Um, interesting. So Terry is saying, uh, I spoke to my nephew fighting in Ukraine. He mentioned the MREs were so bad that they preferred stealing Russian ones. I'm surprised about that. Any chance Vlad can help? Let me ask. Uh, Terry's talking about meals ready to eat. Thank you, Martin, for the great with Meals ready to eat, MREs, uh, thank you, Felicia, are the meals that, um, I don't want to say freeze-dried, but basically meals that you can carry with you that won't go bad, right, that the soldiers eat. Now, historically, the Russian ones were horrific. Um, the Ukrainian ones were supposed to be much better than the Russian ones in general. So that's interesting. To hear. Um, Callum says, MREs have been sent from other countries as well. Cuisine they aren't used to is half the issue. Ah, okay, okay. So Callum, uh, British military, just recently left, was working with Ukrainians, says that half the issue is that they're not used to basically the food they're getting. So no offense to the British, but they're eating British food for, for the first time, as I think what Callum is saying, <laughs> more nicely than I would. Um, but that's, you know, that's part of the issue. <laughs> that's part of the issue. Um, I had I don't know Yolanda the Russian I had read and was watching videos on the Russian stuff being pretty nasty. Um, I still have actually. I have a, a little a little container. I still got off it off actually when I went to DC. A little container of pate of liver pate. I mean I guess that's what pate is, but from the Russian military MREs, which is just wild. Yeah. So um, anyway, Malaya those. Uh, I'll mention it to Vlad though and ask him. Remind, remind me again as well. To add that. Um, Associated Press says they have a journalist team with Ukrainian special forces in the last six months. That's interesting. I didn't find the full story. Did you? I did not see that. Did anybody hear about this? The Associated Press story or something saying they had a uh, journalist embedded with Ukrainian special forces in the last six months? That's wild. I didn't hear that. Wow. I don't know. That's very interesting, though. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jack and Amanda. Um, that's very interesting. Huh. Hmm. What else we got? That box with a star has some good stuff. You mean the Russian stuff? Interesting. I got, we had gotten one of the the Russian MRE boxes, actually, that we were going to auction off for folks. And the Ukrainian customs folks stole it. <laughs> and I mean, they did steal it. Because, you know, really, trying to, trying to leave the country with the Russian with Russian food rations was like illegal. Give me a break. You know, they took it because they wanted to, they wanted to basically give it to somebody else as a gift. So but you almost got you almost got the box with the Russian star on it, but what do you do? Little bastards. Um yeah, don't know Malayathos. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know. 
Um, yeah, plenty of videos on YouTube showing Ukrainian MREs. I just remember the Russian ones, them saying were worse. Yeah, there was some like chocolate that was like fake chocolate. Also, really nasty stuff. Queen Rania, I saw the Queen Rania is in a fight with somebody. Thank you, Magical. Who was it? Um, I'm not remembering now. I saw somebody really ripping her. Queen Rania is the, the wife of King Abdullah of Jordan. Um, but I, I'm forgetting what the story was. It was obviously dealing with Gaza, but she said something. I don't know whether it was about the sexual assault or what. It was something that she got slammed hard on. Um, uh, what else, guys? What else we get? What else? What else? What else? Again, we can talk about Ukraine. We can talk about Israel. We can talk about the election, too, the U.S. election, if you want. Um, we're on the defense coalition of the Red Sea. No. Um, there was one report today. Basically, the Houthi or kind of a rebel group in Yemen, have been attacking uh, international shipping, also U.S military, also Israel, from Yemen, which is pretty far away from Israel. And um, because they've been attacking the commercial shipping, a lot of the companies sort of stopped their shipping in the area because they didn't want to get the ships attacked. And at least one big company came back today, I saw, one of the big shippers. I didn't mention it because I kind of thought it was like, not that big of a story to say, oh, this shipper says they're coming back. But that's at least a good sign. But uh, the U.S. did say we were forming some kind of a coalition to help preserve the, the shipping ways. I'm going to guess that it's going to be some kind of, you know, U.S., Brits, and probably a few other folks with ships in the area, military ships, patrol, uh, to basically protect the, the seaways, I guess. But, you know. Um, okay, that's, yeah, there's Malaya versus AP story. Yep, don't know. Interesting. Don't know about that. Oh, uh, what else, guys? What else, what else, what else? Nigeria? What about Nigeria? Um, a typical weekday. <clears throat> well, it's hard right now because I'm in Chicago visiting my mom, so it's like all over the place. But typically, honestly, I'm reading the news all day. I'm reading the news all day, um, doing videos, and then for about two hours, usually, I prepare for the show tonight. Um, you know, kind of then grabbing the news stories, the latest ones, and getting you know, I. I write my little, I've got, this, these are, I've got three pages, but sort of three pages of notes and stuff, but that's sort of the typical, the typical. Uh, what else, what else, what else? What else, guys? Ukraine news. I gave you the Ukraine news at the beginning. Um, how long have you been back on your lives? Um, I mean, I talked for a week because I was on vacation and then got sick with a cold in Arizona. Um, did one or two last week and then skipped. Tuesday because it was just a pain in the business. So now I'm back uh, full time, so to speak. I stand with Russia or Ukraine. I stand with Ukraine. I've never stood with Russia. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Um, Supreme Court Colorado news. Is there any, I don't get anything. There's not really anything new on that, is there? I don't think so. F-16 verified in Ukraine. I don't know about verified, but supposedly the Netherlands had already sent 16 or 18, maybe 18, I think, to Ukraine already. You know, remember there was that rumor that came out that the that the Russian fighter jets that got shot down or the fighter bombers, whatever they were, the Su-34. Remember, like five of them got shot down in one day, and there were rumors that could that have been you know U.S. F-16s in action, right? I mean, who knows? I doubt it. It'd be cool if it was. It basically shocked the Russians. Um, it would certainly explain why the Russians let five planes get blown up. The fact that five planes got blown up in one day means something weird is going on, right? Something unusual happened. Like, why weren't the Russians prepared? What did they face that they weren't prepared for, right? F-16s would, would certainly answer that question. I have a hard time believing they're being used already, but who knows? You know? Thanks for that. Um, who knows? Maybe the Biden administration is so freaked out that they up the timetable on the F-16s. I don't know, right? It'd be cool if they did. Um, updates on the U.S. response to Yemen's attack in the Red Sea. No, uh, Biden is taking it very slowly. Um, he, you know, there's really no, I mean, there's no update at all, but, but I have, I have seen the defense folks talking online saying that everyone kind of feels in the next, within the next month, we're going to be bombing Yemen. Um, and that Biden is trying to drag this out because he's hoping we don't have to. But from my perspective, I think, look, I had the same 
Biden clearly approaches things in a way that I don't. Um, he's very thoughtful, which I am, but he likes to go very slowly out of fear so as in order to keep things from escalating. And we saw him do this. There you go. Jens just escalated. That's exactly the phrase. This is what he did with Ukraine, right? Kept going slowly with, with, with giving aid and what kind of aid we gave. And then when we finally gave the better aid, how much of it, even the attack was good that they wanted, we finally gave them some, but not many. And we didn't give them the ones they wanted. We gave them the short ones, not the long. Everything is pulling back, go slow, so we don't escalate, right? And my fear was he would do the same thing in the Middle East. And I think, yeah, um, you know, don't want to escalate with Iraq. We don't want to escalate with, with the militias in Iraq. We don't want to escalate with Yemen. So they keep attacking us, and we keep kind of hitting them. I mean, you know, we kill one or two terrorists or whatever, probably. That's about it. And he doesn't want to sort of hit hard and say, stop it, because he's afraid of it escalating. Now, mind you, he's not entirely wrong. It's possible. Okay, Rainbow, you be nature. That is, it is totally different, isn't it? Good to see you. Um, you know, again, I don't know that he's wrong. I mean, there's an argument to be made, right, for, for not wanting to obviously get into a war with Yemen. I mean, we'd win. I think we can take Yemen. But nonetheless, do we want that happening? No. Do we want Yemen, the Houthis just going nuts, attacking commercial shipping in the area? No. You know, so I get it, but but I feel like he's so interested in not escalating that he's almost causing escalation. You know, you know, by basically it comes across weak, even if it's not meant to be weak. That is my concern. So anyway, but or the America or the election stuff too. We did talk about Nikki Haley. Her little slavery gaffe at the beginning. <sighs> Nothing really. There's no real news about North Korea. They checked. They you know checked another intercontinental ballistic missile recently, which was very scary. You know, I I fear that the states does look weak. I mean, Yoav is saying the states look weak in the Middle East, in the U.S. I think we do. Look weak. I do think we do. Look weak. You know. Um. Even if I don't think it's by the 2022 candidate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's the candidate. Unless unless something happens. But he's made clear he's running, so no one serious is running again. I mean, that guy, whatever the hell his name is, the other guy's name, I mean, Kennedy's not serious. I and mean, He's going to go independent. One hopes Kennedy hurts Trump more than he hurts Biden, but who knows? Um, you know, oops, who is that? Crazy American? Thanks, Crazy American. Um. I don't know if North Korea is preparing for war. That's Mr. Tink. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, the mic is corded, which might be why. Cut out a little bit when I moved around. Oh, that's interesting. Although maybe the mic connection is getting a little, uh, it's getting a little weak because it's getting old. But uh, you know, who knows what's going on with North Korea? He's nuts, and they are—they're a little nuts. North Korea is problematic because they are crazy. Obviously, the Russians are vicious, but they're not crazy. They're immoral, they're amoral, but they're not crazy. So I think the Russians act rationally, even though they're amorals, basically, right? Um, the North Koreans are crazy. That's that's where you get into the, the scary stuff, where simply standing up to them may or may not be enough, you know? Um, but I did see a statement we put out the other day telling them that if they dared attack us or anybody. Like if they were to use their nukes against anybody in Asia, we told them we would basically put them back and take them out of the war. Uh, that was a statement the US put out the other day. I'm glad to see. That was a nice strong statement that because the North Koreans, I think you just got to be very clear that we will nuke you and destroy you <laughs> if 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 that happens. You know? Um YouTube shouldn't have changed. Oh, the YouTube mic. No, I'm not even moving. The YouTube mic is the YouTube mic. There's no connect. I'm sorry. We're talking about the mic on YouTube again. The YouTube mic is down here. I thought you meant this. this is not the YouTube mic. I'm not even touching the YouTube mic. So that's something weird going on. And I think with the connection again. So, you know, I can. Well, let me go change the connection once the audio. One moment here. I'll change it to. Uh, now it's to my Mac. 
Pro, and now let me change it back to Blue Snowball. Try that. All right, try that on YouTube. See if that can be better. Um, favorite movie in 2023? Oh God, I'm terrible at favorite movies. I have to think of what I saw this year. I can't remember what movies I've seen this year, to be honest. I haven't been to many movies. I've been watching them on TV. I can't remember. I, I can't remember. Ooh. And I haven't seen really many of the new ones. I, you know what I did just see? I finally saw Barbie. I hated Barbie. Hated Barbie. The first half I thought was good. And the second, I mean, that movie needed an editor so badly for my terms. I mean, the first half, thank you, Cammie. The first half or first third to half was good. And then it just went, it like jumped the shark. It just jumped the shark. I thought the rest, I mean, I, I just don't, you know, the lecturing and oh my God. No, I'm serious. I was watching with my nephew. We loved the first half. We thought the first half was was hilarious. And the second half was just awful. Even the Ken stuff. The Ken stuff started to get a little too negative for me, to be honest. It was like a little too, like the way he became, I was like for a Barbie movie, it was kind of grossing me out. But also it was just, you know, I don't like movies that sit here and tell me. And now we're going to discuss something very deep. And I'm going to put on deep music. And actually, it's not deep at all. It's rather simple. But I'm going to pretend it's deep. And we're all going to go, oh, that makes me sick. You might as well have pink puppies or something, you know. Wonka, I've not seen. I've heard it's not as good as people think it is. I'm hoping it's good because I'd like to see it. Um, but who knows? But, I, yeah, I see things mostly at home. I saw Barbie at home, too. Oppenheimer, I've not seen. Waiting. To, I was going to say dying to see it. Waiting to see Oppenheimer when it comes on Netflix or wherever, but Barbie was on Netflix or something. And I was uh, at my nephew's in Arizona. We watched it. But like I said, second half, I just thought was written very poorly. Very poorly. First half was, was very good though. Indiana Jones. That's funny. I never liked the Deadpools. I, I tried watching the first Deadpool and it annoyed me. I think cause I'm not like a horny 13 year old boy. It just, I was watching going, this is already getting on my nerves. It was just like 13 year old boy humor for my taste. Sorry. Um, Oppenheimer, yeah, Oppenheimer. I've heard was good, obviously. Deadpool, of course. And Callum says Deadpool is hilarious. So, okay, I rest my case. <laughs> I rest my case. Um, you know, I did finally get an Xbox. I caved because we were playing Baldur's Gate nonstop, and I have tasted movies, but because I don't like Barbie. <laughs> Come on. I didn't like Barbie and Deadpool, so I have no taste in movies. Come on. Um, humor, well, humor is tough anyway. Humor is a very difficult thing. Thank you, Malcolm, because everyone's got a different sense of humor. You know what I mean? Um, I'm an old lady and I love Deadpool. That should be like that should be like a quote that goes on the movie marquee. You know what I mean? I'm an old lady and I like Deadpool. Um, I, I just I'm getting the Xbox. It's it's in DC. I'm going to get it when I get home. But I'm going to start with Baldur's Gate. Diablo came with it. Diablo 3 as well. So those are the first two I'm going to start with. Um, that's the kind of stuff I I like the, uh, I like the uh, whatever you call them, games. The, like, Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons type games. The New Little Mermaid. Is that the one where, like, the guy's the mermaid or the, or the black woman's the mermaid and everyone's all freaked out? Or, there's something different about it, right? A COD man? No. I went to U of I, if that's what you're asking. Um, War Thunder? I don't know what War Thunder is. Is it a game or something? Call, oh, Call of Duty. I'm thinking Call. I'm thinking COD. COD is a is an is a community college in the Chicago suburbs. I'm thinking. Were you asking where I went to college? Oh, Call of Duty. My nephew's like. I never like. You know, I never. Enjoy, it's funny because I am very interested in military things, so to speak. Um, I've never enjoyed the first person shooter games. I mean, I have to like try again. Maybe I would be, but I've never enjoyed them. My nephews love them. And I, for me, like, I like the D Dungeons and Dragons, you know, I, I like being a wizard and the spells and all that kind of stuff. I love that stuff. Star Trek, of course, Star Trek's great. Um, but Call of Duty and all those things I never enjoyed. Um, but I've got to, I'll try it then. Skyrim, I got, I'm trying to, I don't remember it, but I have Skyrim. Um, you know, isn't that ever, uh, ever winter nights or ever winter or whatever? No, no, never winter nights. Uh, ever what's Skyrim? Skyrim's little sub name or whatever, right? The games. Thank Cornflower. Um, War Thunder is a military game where you earn vehicles and fight with a team 
There are many countries to choose from. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Psionics. I have not finished Picard yet. I've got a while. Elder Scrolls. Yes, Elder Scrolls. Yeah, I did play that. I enjoy that. Dune as a game or a movie? Yeah, Elder Scrolls. I enjoyed. Yep, I enjoy all those. Um, what else? What else? Good. Now we're talking about computer games, which I'm fine talking about computer games. We sort of finished talking about the war, but that's okay. Picard season three, I've got to watch. I think he's not doing another season. Like he said he was going to do three seasons and that was it or something, which is too bad. Oh, the movie Dune. Um, It's good enough. I mean, it's good. I found it a little slow, but not slow. I have to watch it again. I, It's good enough. It's not bad, but I really liked the book and I'm finding the movie to be a little like uh think a critter like i think it's the problem i don't like with the, with the with 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 um dune is it feels like one of those movies where literally they're doing it from the book so it's like okay chapter 1 this scene and then cut chapter 2 this scene and then cut and like i just feel like it's grabbing 10 different scenes out of the book and stitching them together right and for example if you're really into dune thank you critter for the gift there if you're really into dune the whole thing with the mom being Bene Gesserit or however they pronounce it and the crazy reverend mother coming and all that stuff, that's a big deal. That's a big part of the whole move, of the whole storyline. And it's a throwaway. It's just a throwaway in the movie. Like that, that philosophy and everything is a huge deal in the book. And that they, they just couldn't delve into it because they, they had too much stuff they were already covering. Thank you, Jenna. So I didn't like that. That, that was a good example of how I felt like they missed stuff because they were just jumping in and going, okay, boom, boom, boom. The spice, the spice too. You're right. The spice isn't really as big as it should be in some ways. Um, favorite music bands. We did that one. Way. I'm not going to go through all of that right now only because we did that one Sunday. About a month ago, we went through like two hours of just picking music and playing it. So hard to give you my favorite bands. I like progressive rock, basically. New Wave. I'm a big progressive rock, 1980s music guy 90s project hail mary i don't know it Ramstein, i do like Ramstein. I, I mean i don't know like fire fry or whatever it's called i don't remember the i don't know the rest of their songs but that song i liked ramstein's on the edge of like music that's really hard yeah olive garden mom's house mom's house decorated probably in the 1950s or 60s before we bought it so who fighters yeah don't start the music thing though, because we're gonna we're gonna get into an endless cycle of music. But yeah, B fifty twos. Kelly says I like mystery games where you have to pick up clues and work out the solution. What was the game that was really hard? Um, remember the game? It wasn't Skyrim, but it was a name like that. That I I hated. People loved it. I hated it because remember you started in some near next to some building, like some angular building. And they didn't tell you anything. And there was no clue as to what you were supposed to do. You literally just started next to some building. It had like a one word name, Mist. There we go. Kelly, I knew. I was going to say like Skyrim, Mist was it. I hated it. I remember Marion, I think, was the one who told me about Mist and she loved it. My friend Marion, who joins us a lot. Um, people love Mist. I hate it. I just didn't know what to do. I got so bored, you know? Um, but I'm sure it's good if you figure it out. <laughs> you know, um, Grand Theft Auto. I've never played, but for me, that's like a first-person shooter game. You know, I don't, I don't think I've ever understood those kind of games. I'm willing to try them again, but I just, I just, I, I like, you know, I like being a mage. <laughs> you know, and th those kind of games. Um, I ought to try Mist again and see if I can figure out what the deal is, because it just, like I said, was just too hard. Um, I, mean, I just, I literally got stuck. I couldn't, I couldn't proceed. Um, I'm really, I am not the military guy to tell you about the F-15 versus F-22. That ain't my background. Maybe Callum or if Mustard's here today. He, Mustard was here earlier. Maybe they can give you some feedback, but I, I have nothing to tell you on that. I'm foreign policy guy, not military guy. I can tell you about France versus Germany, <laughs> but not about the F-15 versus the F-22. Um, what else? Thank you, Teresa, for the gift on TikTok. Um, I has the Ukrainian mission failed? 
I worry that we are at a stalemate now um, because the West never wanted to give Ukraine what it, what it needed to win. And it's still good, but, you know, um, so I worry, I worry that it kind of is what it is now. Now, a really big concern is what happens next because it's not like Russia's going to stop. Russia's going to still try to get more land. We don't want Russia to hold the land that they've got. Um, no, it's bad. I mean, if I were Ukrainian, I would have made very clear to the West early on that, that, and I said this too, I would have made very clear to the West early on that if we start losing, I'm going to do everything possible as a Ukrainian to stop the Russians. And I mean, everything possible. And you may not like some of the things I'm going to do, but I'm going to, I'm going to fight dirty. As Jedimom said, that's, I will put it that way so as not to get in trouble with YouTube censors or TikTok censors. I would fight as dirty as possible against the Russians if I were Ukrainian, and I would make clear to the West that that's what's coming. That if you thought me firing some missiles or firing some drones into Russia was bad, you wait and see what I'm going to do to the Russians if your guy's aid dries up and we're in danger of losing. Because if I were Ukrainian, I would make clear that if I'm in danger of losing my country, as many Russians are coming with me. And that would be very not pretty what I would do next. Again, I'm avoiding certain words because <laughs> I don't want to get into trouble. But um, but yes, fighting dirty would be a nice way of putting what I would do if I were Ukrainian at this point. Moscow should be next, but I'm saying they should do things in Moscow that nobody would even imagine if, as far as I'm concerned. You know, because, and honestly, the West should have been told about that anything. They should have been told, you know, you guys don't support us the way we need to be supported. And I'm telling you, you know, you know, those car bombs, like, because they did, the Ukrainians did a few car bombs. They should say, we did a few car bombs. You wait and see how many car bombs we're going to do, right? You know, if if this goes south. Um, anyway, very upsetting to me. Ah, uh, okay. People are having an F fifteen, F twenty two debate on YouTube. Just for the for the record, for those who asked. Um. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, blue sky to some degree. Yes, I don't think that's always the case. I don't think it's always the case. Well, boredom. Here's the problem with Ukraine. It says, why is it our job to fix this? Send your kids. They are sending their kids. We're not sending our kids. There isn't a single U.S. force, U.S. troop involved. There isn't a single NATO soldier involved. It's all Ukrainian kids who are dying. All of them. All of them. They're dying for us. So that's the first thing, is it's not our kids, right? Thank you, Trilitic. Second thing, we're not helping Ukraine out of the goodness of our heart. I mean, a lot of us care about Ukraine out of the goodness of our heart. But we're helping Ukraine because it's freaking Russia. And the Russians have been the bane of our existence for 100 years, not 100, 70 years in the 1900s. 70 freaking years these people terrorized the world. It is a bad place. It is a country run by very bad people. And a country that it likes to tend towards dictatorship, towards bombs. They've got nuclear weapons and they're nasty and they hate us and they would like to destroy us. And they have always wanted to destroy us. And guess what? They're back. They were gone for 30 years not even that much, really. But the Soviet Union died in 1991, and it's back now. And we have a very dangerous, bad people who are trying to start wars in Europe, and they're coming after us next. And history shows us that that the Russians especially, you know, like to start war, or at least, well, the Russians actually helped start World War II, by the way. People sort of forget that. Um, but the Russians have a history of just horrific what the Russians did over the last 100 years. So that's why we get involved because it's dangerous as hell what's going to happen next if the Russians win in Ukraine. If they start going, because if the Russians, by the way, start going after Poland or Finland, thank you, Cornflower, or Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, if they go after any of those countries, then we're literally at war because of NATO. We are literally at war with Russia. So yeah, we get involved now to help stop Russia and Ukraine so that we don't have to stop Russia everywhere else with our troops in an all-out war. So yeah. It matters. And yes, the far American left did love the USSR. Now it's the MAGA right that loves the US, that loves that loves the Russians. Yeah, it was the far left before. 
And I would say that the far left didn't want to defend America before. Now it's the MAGA right that doesn't want to defend America. It, it, it sickens me. I was always for defending America, to be honest. Um, Ukraine, oh, I, Maddie is a troll. Um, but Maddie, uh, if you actually Google, good point. Maddie brought up how corrupt is Ukraine. Uh, you should Google that because there's a world corruption index and you will see on it that Ukraine isn't great, but Ukraine's far better than Russia. Russia is far more corrupt than Ukraine. So if we're actually looking at relative corruption and that were the way you were basing who you would support in this war, you would support Ukraine, no question, because Ukraine's a democracy, got some corruption. It's, hey, it's Eastern Europe. <laughs> you know, it's Eastern Europe and it's a little bit of Southern Europe too, I would say. Um, but it doesn't compare to Russia in terms of uh, corruption. Oh my God. But yeah, Google it. It's some kind of international corruption index it's called or something. So glad, even though you're a troll and I hope the mods are blocking you, um, glad that you brought up a point that I was able to blow up in your face about mother Russia being way more corrupt than Ukraine. Also, by the way, quick point here. I couldn't care less if Ukraine's corrupt. Thank you, Super Hornet. I'm not in Ukraine. Like, I'm not giving them weapons. I'm not giving them money because I like them, right? That's not what U.S. foreign policy is based on, and it's not what the foreign policy of any country is based on. Personal politics help, right? If Zelensky has relationships with foreign leaders, it certainly helps. Thank you, Tennessee and Joe. But, but one of the things that people on the fringes of politics, usually it's the far left. Now I think it's the far right as well. But the far left sort of forget is... You don't like foreign policy isn't made based on who you like because they always go, you know, they're mean or they're bad or whatever the hell it is. That's not how you make, you don't make foreign policy based on how corrupt Ukraine is or isn't. You look at Ukraine winning or losing this war and how does it affect my country? Is it good or bad for America if Ukraine wins or loses? I mean, when it really when you really comes down to it, you do a Machiavellian analysis. It's a nasty analysis. It's very selfish. It's very narcissistic, and it is what every country on earth does, but we all like to pretend we don't. You say, does it affect my country anyway, what's going on there? And if it does, which way? And if I get involved, can I make a difference and will it help me? Is it worth the cost of getting involved to help my country? And we decided that stopping Russia and stopping a future war with Russia and NATO is worth getting in there and spending some money now to stop the war in the future. We didn't do it because Ukraine, but Ukraine's got some corruption. So I guess it's okay to let Russia win and start a war with NATO, right? I mean, did we, like in World War II? Well, I don't know. You know, the French government, they were kind of corrupt before World War II. So let's not invade Normandy because the French might not have been as democratic as we like, right? I mean, right? That's not how you decided Normandy. You decided Normandy on did we need to stop the Germans or not? You didn't say, well, those countries the Germans invaded, were they all really good good? <laughs> I mean, that's just not how you, you analyze politics. You just don't. So, yeah. And again, I'm more, thank you, Dina. I am more Machiavellian in some ways. I care about Ukraine personally, but as an American, if I were an American, uh, you know, American policymaker, I would do it based on what's best for my country. And that's what every country does. And again, the far left used to be the one that didn't understand this. Oh, that's so selfish. You're only, my favorite was hearing people go, you're only involved in this conflict or that conflict because it helps your country. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Are you not aware of how things work? <laughs> you know? Um, and user 852 is right. The Ukraine war is actually NATO fighting Russia. It is. And we've been kicking their ass actually, which I'm very glad to say. Um, it's been Ukraine fighting Russia too, because Russia invaded Ukraine and started the whole war. But it's also, uh, it's NATO fighting Russia. Of course it is. Yeah. And Russia's very lucky that it's only via Ukraine, because if it happened directly, we would crush them, because our military is much bigger and much better than theirs. Um, but yeah, duh. That's another talking point the trolls like to bring up. It's a proxy war. Yeah, it is. And? Yeah. We're, I mean, U.S. weapons are killing Russian troops. I mean, it doesn't, that, that's why I think the Biden stuff always drives me crazy. You know, we don't want to escalate with Russia. They'll get mad. We're literally killing Russian troops in Ukraine with our weapons. I mean, I think we've already crossed the line, you know? I mean, that's 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 life, you know? Um, uh, anyway. Anyway, what else, what else, what else? Um, what else? 
Ukraine hasn't done poorly. I mean, look, Ukraine's fighting one of the biggest armies in the world. And supposedly they were supposedly fighting one of the, you know, one of the best armies we thought. Ukraine's done a damn good job. But the problem is they would have done a much better job had we gotten them the weapons they needed and had we gotten them much earlier. And we didn't. We are to blame for why Ukraine is stuck where it is right now. Absolutely, positively. It's our fault. And it's it's a crime because I've been predicting this for two years now that this was going to happen. And this is exactly what I was afraid was going to happen, that that we wanted a stalemate. We gave them the weapons for a stalemate. And it's now a stalemate. Congratulations. And the Republicans aren't helping either. Thank you, M. Fuller. You know, the Republicans pulling the pl plug on funding is only making it worse. You know, um, anyway. Anything else, guys? Otherwise, we can wrap it up. It's 6.15. We can wrap it up, I think. I'm still, it's funny. I'm still getting over that cold. Like, I'm over the cold, but I could tell my throat was bothering me last night. And I'm still, it's been two weeks. I'm still really tired. It, whatever cold is out, a lot of people are getting sick too now, I'm hearing. Whatever cold is out there, it's almost like a COVID-esque cold, but it wasn't testing positive with the test. So, who knows? Will Sweden be in NATO? You know, Turkey is slowly moving forward. We'll see. Um, I'm not convinced Turkey's going to finish it. Maybe they will. We're waiting for the um, we're waiting for the uh, 100 day cough. Yeah, no, I've had like two weeks of a cough. It's it's getting better now, but I'm very tired still. Um, you know, a we need the Turkish Parliament to approve Sweden joining NATO. Then we need Hungary doing it too. Hungary kept claiming they weren't going to stand in the way, but Hungary works for Putin. So I don't know. In the end, I think we can probably bash the the germans we can bash the hungarians and the turks into coming along but we may need to on this nato stuff um it's bad it's bad yeah richie's another troll we never should have sent a penny to ukraine america first we're doing it to help america so that doesn't make any sense richie and now look how much worse our country is our country is doing great how much worse our country is first of all any any problem you could point to has nothing to do with Ukraine. Inflation was a problem last year. It's gone now. But inflation didn't happen because of Ukraine. Inflation happened because of COVID and Trump and the way he handled it. Um, so that's not it. Otherwise, how the country's doing? Our economy is like the... I mean, you guys abroad, like I said, our inflation is down to like 3%. Our GDP growth just went over 5%. I mean, if you're from another country looking at this, you're going, damn. Our interest rates are now uh, frozen and they're going to come down next year, we were told. I mean, it's great. Milk isn't $8. Don't give me that crap. If you're buying $8 milk, you're buying it from like, you know, milk from the teat of the cow or something. Are you kidding me? My milk is $250, $260 for milk. Milk isn't $8 unless you live somewhere crazy. But that's not true. Yeah. No, I hate because they bring up that kind of crap too, you know? You know, $8 milk. People have been complaining. They buy the most expensive stuff and then explain that it's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Our economy is doing better than it has in decades. And everyone's complaining, oh, it's bad. This is this is the MAGA problem, though. We've created two, two basically sources of news, the real source of news and the crazy Republican source of news. And the crazy Republican stuff is just putting out bullshit to everybody. You know, I mean, it's crazy. Where are you that a gallon of milk is $4 to $5? Regular milk, the cheapest milk? I mean, if you live in Hawaii or Alaska, maybe, but but that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. New Jersey, but anywhere, but any grocery, any regular, I'm talking a regular big grocery store. Going to Walmart is going to cost you 4 or $5 for milk in Jersey? I mean, maybe. I have a hard time believing that. Well, California is its own problem, but yeah. But generally speaking, prices are down massively. Chris is saying it's five bucks in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, get out of here! But again, at a big store, Walmart is five bucks. Wow, it's been consistently two fifty three bucks here in Chicago, two fifty three bucks in Washington D.C. for the for the entire time. COVID, it went up a little bit, and that's it. Went up a little bit. That's it. Yeah. No, I know a gallon. I'm talking a gallon. Yeah. Yeah. I. It's just yeah. I don't really do New Year's. I mean, I mean, I don't mind, but I have no plans for New Year's, no, because I'm also still here in Chicago. So, well, Canada, I can't speak for Canada. 
know what I mean? Different, different, different countries. Liberal media does not have so many retractions. No, they don't. <laughs> you you got that from some conservative media. That first of all, I don't know what liberal media is. There is no liberal media. The liberal media is like Rachel Maddow or something. Um, but but the but the regular mainstream media doesn't have a lot of retractions at all. You got that from Fox News or somebody else who was lying to you. Um, and until you sort of realize that and go and read real news, you're not going to, you know, unless you sort of read real news, you're never going to get the truth about stuff. But don't go believing what people are telling you. Um, in any case, you know. Whatever. I was going to say fancy milk being five bucks, but maybe, maybe something. Well, Alaska, yeah, Alaska is a different story. Although the fact that milk is only four twenty nine dollars a gallon in Alaska surprises me. Because if it's four twenty nine dollars a gallon in Alaska, right, you'd think it would be cheaper elsewhere. Because I've been to Alaska a lot. I know, I know the problems with getting products to Alaska, you know. Um, that's a whole other story. You know, in Canada, I'm not going to take uh, responsibility for the prices in Canada. <laughs> Andre, <laughs> pas ma faute. <laughs> so, or pas notre faute. Um, you know, but uh, in any case, no, they were claiming the Republicans were trying to claim that turkeys are more expensive than ever. They aren't. They're down. I mean, that's what bothers me is they like to point to individual. You could point to individual places where prices might be bad across the country overall. They're down. Across the country overall, unemployment is at a historic low. Across the country overall, wages are rising much higher than prices across the country overall. So generally speaking, the economy is doing great. Just takes a while, you know. Um, ultra processed milk, whatever. We're getting into a long milk discussion here. How do the Russian people feel about the war? I haven't seen a poll in about a month or two. I did bring up some polls previously where... You know, they seem to be getting increasingly worried, but they're still defending it. So it's this, you, you, you just, you see signs that they're, they're worrying and they would like the war to go away. They'd like a settlement, but they're in it for the long haul if they need to be kind of thing, you know, which is too bad. The border situation and immigration, I'm pretty tough on border stuff. I don't think people should be crossing the border illegally. Not a fan of it. And for refugee status, I go with the law. Uh, most people don't, a lot of people don't realize that the law says for ref in the U.S. at least, there's no such thing as an economic refugee in American law. You aren't allowed to cross the border because you're economically, in, meaning you don't get to skip the line because you come from a poor country. It doesn't work that way, right? You've got to get in the same line everybody else gets. You can skip the line if you are a political refugee, right? If you have a, uh, I forget the exact quote, a sincere belief of, you know, of being politically oppressed or what, I, I forget the the actual the actual description the, the 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 language of the law but a political refugees yes right they're allowed to come if you're politically oppressed from another country and you're in fear of your life your livelihood etc but you don't get to come to america just because you come from a place that's poor in other words you don't get to jump the line is what i mean you have to get in line with everybody else and i think a lot of people would like them to jump the line and i think that's bullshit you know I mean, and again, they and they want Latin Americans because they're afraid of the Democratic voting voting base. And I think a lot of Latin American Americans, Americans who are Latinos, I don't think they want a lot of people coming here illegally, to be honest. <laughs> but I think a lot of Democrats think they do. To be I really and no, no, having said that, having said that, Republicans, when they talk about immigration, I think it's a lot of racism. I think they're playing games. You know, I think there's some Republicans who get it. But I think a lot of Republicans are playing games and they're simply using immigration as a way of bashing Latinos and getting votes. All the brown people are coming right to Trump. They're going to dilute your blood or whatever the hell he said. They're going to they're going to water down white people. Right. Which is crazy racist stuff. Right. That's bad. Um, and as always happens in our politics, we often get extremes on both sides. I don't think Democrats are serious enough about controlling the border. And I think Republicans are playing racist games with the border. So, well, what a surprise, American politics, you know? Um, I just don't want people crossing the border illegally. I don't care if they're criminals or not. I just think it's, it's you know, again, Trump's wall thing seemed kind of stupid, but I think, because also Trump didn't even build the damn wall. She is, she, Sasha is asleep uh, in the bed right beneath where we're working here, so. Um. Yeah, no, no. So I, it's funny. I disagree with well, not a lot of Democrats, but I disagree with the left on uh, the immigration thing because, like I said, I just you know we've got to have control of our borders, and I don't know why it's so hard to 
just like say that as a Democrat. Yeah, we don't want people crossing illegally. I mean, <laughs> why is that difficult to say? You know, I don't get it. I don't know. Um, anyway. All right, guys, it's 620. All right, I'm going to go. Oh, boy. Oh, Vivek wants to build a wall on the northern border <laughs> to stop those Canadians. Look out. I'm not doing a recap tonight. We've gone long. Um, the, yeah, stop the evil Canadians from crossing the border with their maple syrup. Dun, dun, dun. You know? Oh, well. Yeah, he's insane. No, but the southern border is a problem. And, you know, it's just what percentage of U.S. immigrants get deported? I don't know. We do do the Discord after party, but usually we finish this so late, like right now, that I really don't feel like hanging out for an hour on Discord because we've already been doing this late. We should have tried to end this earlier. Maybe tomorrow. Let's try to do tomorrow if we can. Sort of go earlier on Discord and, and go to Discord after. I would. I just like, I'm tired now. Um, but uh, yeah, but I do think the border is a bit of a joke at this point. Um, but again, I think the Republicans don't want to have real solutions and Democrats are afraid of politics of, of cutting. St I just, it's, yeah. Yeah. No, I really, I, I just, well, also Democrats are increasingly worried about their base, which is not good either, you know, because they can't tell their base, guess what? We don't let people into this country just because they're economic hardship. That's not the way the law works. I mean, you, that's just not, you get in line with everybody else saying things are bad in Venezuela economically does not give you an, a right to come here above and skip the line above everybody else. No, 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 no. You are a political prisoner in Venezuela. Yes, that you get to skip the line because we've always we've always accepted that. But they think it's cruel to say, you know, yeah, you've got problems in other countries. I'm sorry. That doesn't mean we just let you in. <laughs> like, I mean, what's the problem with that? You know, Um no, we should, but we should help them try to fix their problems. And, you know, we've been, but, you know, anyway. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Um, thank you for joining us, guys. Tomorrow we'll do another show, 6 o'clock Eastern Time U.S., remember? And then Saturday morning. Um, okay. Well, you can sure you can send it, Aces. Uh, Saturday morning, I've got my coffee talk where we hang out with the monthly subscribers on TikTok and YouTube and everywhere else. Um, so, uh, make sure we'll talk about it tomorrow as well, but make sure to join me that 11 AM Eastern time. No noon Eastern time. U S is the time whenever I'm traveling that I do it. So look for me then. Otherwise. All right. Oh, the UN birthday stories. What is that for? What do you mean? Oh, you mean for your birthday. Yeah. I'll have to think, I'll have to think of another crazy UN story. I thought of one recently. I forgot what it was. There was some UN story I was thinking of. Oh yeah. I'll tell you, uh, remind, I think I told you guys about this, but remind me of the, I think I told you about this one, the UN story when uh, my staff accused me of racism because they said I wanted to change. I worked at the United Nations, a horrific organization, because the staff, they kept putting pictures up of black people in Africa. And anybody who does photography can tell you um, black people, animals, objects, anything that's black in a picture with a lot of other stuff is going to get uh, burned out. You're not going to be able to see it. Because your camera is going to look at, for example, if I'm standing here, my camera is going to look at the light behind me on the wall, right? It's going to look at other things and adjust the light generally. If someone black were next to me, there's a chance you might not see their face as well because the camera is adjusting for brighter stuff. Google it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a known problem of photographing black people. I'm explaining this to my staff and saying, you know, we're the United Nations. We're the development program. I'm telling you the story anyway. It's not just contrast, though. It's sort of shadow highlight problems. And I'm explaining to them, you know, because we're the development program, a lot of our work is Africa. We're posting a lot of pictures of Africans on our website. And I've noticed that a lot of their faces are washed out, but washed out black so that you can't see anything. You see a pair of eyes and the white people standing with them look great. And they're, they've got nothing on their face. And I said, the way you get around that, and I showed them some pictures, and there's something on Photoshop called shadow highlight that uh, you would go into shadows, and it's a really neat thing. It goes, and it basically takes just the darkest part of the photo and lightens it a little bit. Or in Photoshop, you could also just circle someone's face, right? So I showed them, and I took the faces and lightened the darkest part of the face, so now you got a little bit of contrast here or here, and you actually saw a person's face. It was great. Three days later, my staff came back to me. This is how just 
effed up the United Nations is and the people who work there. My $130,000 a year tax-free staff come up to me and go, we were very disturbed by what you suggested the other day. We are not going to change the races of people we put on our website. And I looked at them and went, are you out of your mind? First of all, I was like, you know, I don't know what I'm more shocked that A, you that that you literally thought I was suggesting it. Like that I was suggesting we change the race of the people we put on our website, that you actually believe that to be the case, that that's like, you didn't just think you heard it, but you believe, you didn't think I must be hearing this wrong. You thought, oh yeah, John is suggesting we change the race of people, right? Um, no, they're a bunch of morons. They're a bunch of absolute morons that work at that organization. And they never up, they never edited the photos. And from this, from that point forward, black people on our website, their faces got wiped out and nobody could see them because the UN staff was so uneducated, stupid, rude, um, uh, you know, narcissistic, superior, superior, that they thought they knew better than everybody else. And in order to defend black people, they didn't edit the photos and we never got to see a black person again on the website. I mean, it was ridiculous, horrific human being. So here you go, Poppy, and you got the story anyway. But I love that. We are not going to change the race of people on the website. I was like, yeah, no shit, you're not. <laughs> like, are you are you insane? No, these are the dumb, 130,000 a year tax free. The dumbest freaking people on the planet work at the United Nations. They're dumb and they're arrogant. Like every bad story you've got about millennials or Gen Z, multiply it by a thousand and apply it to the UN staff. They walk on water, they make too much money and they're horrific. A race changer. Yeah, exactly. There's not even a there's not even a term for what they accuse me. Would it be whiteface, maybe? <laughs> Is it would you call it whiteface? Maybe you call it whiteface, digital whiteface, I guess. Oh my God. I mean, just the and again, in the end, we then had to put photos up because I was like, well, fuck that. I'm not gonna deal with this. So we kept putting photos up and you couldn't see the black people in the photos. And I was like, okay, that's what you want. You win bunch of nasty children. So, oh, go check out the UN. It's, it was UNDP. See if maybe they changed it. Finally, maybe somebody got there who was, who could deal with the, the Borg of the staff, but, and I would show them the photos and like, I don't notice any difference in the photo. I'm like, oh, go away. Just go away. Whatever. They also wouldn't edit their photos. I told them, I said, mind you, I'm, I'm telling the staff, I said, you know what? We've got a budget. I'm going to pay for Photoshop training for all of you to go to Photoshop training for a week. And I want you to edit the photos because they would write stories. I'm like, I want you to edit the photos that go with your stories just to lighten them a little, boost the contra boost the, uh, boost the saturation and make the photos look prettier. We don't want to do that. I'm like, why? <laughs> I, mind, first of all, imagine you tell your staff, we're going to do this. And they say, no, in what job do you say? No, right. They didn't want to do it. I'm like, I'm literally going to pay for you to get Photoshop training for a week. In what possible world do you not want that on your resume as a 20-something or a 30-something working in internet technology, editing, web editing, et cetera, right? I'm going to pay for you to get, for you to get Photoshop training. They didn't want to do it because we got together and looked at the photos. We think the photos look fine the way they are. Oh, I mean, and, and by the way, there was nothing I could do about it because the staff said they thought it was fine. They weren't gonna edit the photos, nothing you could do. Any other job you would get fired outside of the United Nations, correct. They all needed to be fired. I mean, trust me, and I didn't, but I was so tempted to just say, get out, just get out. <laughs> like, I don't need you. No, horrific human being, $130,000 a year tax-free from these morons. Yeah, anyway, now you know the United Nations. And I will say this too, by the way, one little, this is a more important thing. I was thinking about the United Nations with Israel and the Middle East and everything else. I will tell you this. I saw firsthand at the United Nations, things happen at the United Nations based on money. It is all based on who's giving them money. Um, the Arab governments give the United Nations a lot of money. Israel, I doubt Israel does. Um, and also there's one Israel and there's a lot of Arab governments. Um, we were always very conscious of sucking up to, I forget if it was Qatar and Bahrain and some of the uh, UAE and some of those countries around there, right? Because they were, they provided us with a lot of money. I guarantee you that whatever position the UN takes on Gaza will be influenced extremely 
by the budget coming from the Arab states. Um, generally speaking, that doesn't mean the UN isn't upset about Gaza generally. It may be legitimate, right? But the whole issue with, with UN women, which is the UN women group, not wanting to come out and criticize the rape that the Hamas guys did of all the women in Israel, I guarantee you that was because they didn't want to piss off donors because UN women and all those groups survive by donor countries. Individual countries give them money for their annual budget. And I guarantee you they've got a bunch of Arab governments giving them gov giving them money and they didn't want to offend them. That is a huge problem with the UN, whether it's pissing off the US, whether it's pissing off China, whether it's pissing off Russia, they don't want, all their money comes from governments around the world and they don't want to piss off those governments. So they end up not doing anything. That's a whole other problem. But all right, that is your UN lesson for the day. I'm going to go, go whitewash a photo. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Should the UN be abolished? I don't know. Supposedly they do some good work. I don't know. Oh my God, I'm laughing. Okay, I'm going to show the TikTokers, YouTubers. It's hard. I can't show you. The dog is half out of her bed, her her cat bed. <laughs> She's like half out of her cat bed sleeping on the floor, but half of her is still in the bed, which is cracking me up. <laughs> Hold on. I have, to, I have to get a picture of that. But yes, I will see you guys tomorrow. Otherwise, actually, I will get a picture and I can show you guys up here. It's very, I think it's very funny. I don't know if you could appreciate, I mean, you can, I think you can. Hold on. Oops. It looks a little pornographic, but hopefully we, we don't get that. Uh, but uh, oops. But yes, she's, her butt's in the bed and the rest of her is like sleeping on the floor, which I think is just hilarious. <laughs> Too funny. Oh my God, she cracks me up. All right, guys. Um, I will see you tomorrow, six o'clock Eastern. Okay. All right. Goodbye. 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 See you then. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks, mods, and thanks for the gifts and everything, too, guys. Have a good night.